mix things up, but I um, was very attracted to coming here, partly because I was involved in the midterm review and did the value for money work for the Open Budget Initiative, which was part of the GTF for a while back, and I think the debates moved on um, considerably since then, but also because I really liked Jake's framing, which was in the invite looking, does value for money effectiveness and accountability, particularly as it relates to voice and accountability programmes, are they complementary or awkward bedfellows? Um, I'm a bit upset Martin didn't speak more to the paper that Jake sent round to me um, and sort of talked about the value for money in the way that I like, that's very commonsensical, you know, the fact that there is consensus, it's not about doing econometric analysis anymore, it's about maximising use of resources through good practice management, continuous improvement, um, all things which I think everybody would agree with um, and, you know, and instinctively attractive way to try and enhance value for money as well as try and demonstrate it. Um, however, we've also heard from people that it's not that simple to apply in practice and certainly I know when we came to look at the Open Budget Initiative, which is a programme in 90 countries, uh, very different contexts, trying to even on a very long term model of change within a different funded project, think about how would you apply the three E's to the particular log frame hierarchy, the outputs and outcomes didn't match up to efficiency and effectiveness. It was all, it's sort of a much more um, complicated in practice. And um, I'm really glad that it comes to the intuitive, I think, it was a Christian age stuff that's starting to produce, which you can develop using quantitative and qualitative data. A good argument to say that things do obviously add value, however, the extent to which you can compare, as several people have said, I think is, is really questionable. So there are costs and benefits, as Tim said, of different approaches to value for money. And I think in some of the different, Martin can critique me, um, paperwork, there is sort of a suggestion that the ex ante deciding between different options is quite an objective approach. Um, and the business study cases that I've seen, some of the work I've been doing, different projects, I haven't found those terribly convincing. Um, but I think the thing to me is that some approaches, we've talked about a variety, would lend themselves better to the kind of uh, value for money for poor people, effectiveness um, and accountability in terms of mutual responsibility to each other than others. And then when you start having debates with, about value for money with people that expose different values, power relations, assumptions, etc., um, I think that you start raising some questions that have come up today. I mean, whose value, whose money and whose value is it? Do you see a, a donor's investment that belongs to a donor? Or is it an entitlement which is about a bundle of um, rights and responsibilities between different people involved in processes? You know, what do we think it's trying to achieve? Is it about transactional change, about trying to um, buy short-term change, or is it about looking at long-term shifts in power relations, which are much more difficult to assess and would affect the way you think about value for money? Um, we talked about, everybody talked about how long does it take to when do you do value for money, and also the extent to, we, to which we think it's actually possible to assess or know change. I think if you come from certain ways of thinking um, about, say, complexity science, very complex relationship, lots of different people involved in programmes, you know, what can we really know? And we've already, several people have raised, to what extent is it possible to infer causality and should we? You know, in, in a view, certain views of age, you might say that you would want to infer causality, the investment from a donor produce certain returns and results. But from a different perspective, if you look at aid as more of an entitlement about social justice, then there might be much more value on the inputs of other people. You might look to impute the costs and the inputs of people, um, poor people that have contributed their time to participating in activities. And it then all becomes a bit more complicated. So for me, that's why I think it's important not to just to engage with value for money as a sort of technical. It's not just about that there are different approaches that suit different types of programmes. I think it's also the values, your own values as an organisation will very much influence <coughs> how you think about how applying the three A's, the extent to which you think equity is more important, etc. And that's what I particularly, I was hoping Daniel might say a bit more about the Christian Age briefing paper, because I think they, it's a very good example of an organisation saying this is what value for money means within our broad framework. <coughs> 
um, and principles. So I think the things that sort of come up partly is we have to be very clear what approaches work in particular, uh, for particular programs and have quite modest, modest expectations about the extent to which it is possible to compare. Um, and I would say even the, the, the yes, to whether, whether you can ask sensible value for many questions. I remember in the OBI last, in the evaluation, one was would a different allocation of resources have achieved more outcomes and within the context of a program being implemented in 90 different countries where you don't know what's going to happen um, because the, the situations are so unpredictable, it's very political. Is that a sensible question to ask? And to me, I think the, the value of looking at value for money within a framework where accountability is constructed more in terms of mutual relationships, um, shared power that involves all people in deciding what is to be valued and how, to be, how it should be measured, um, is, sorry, that's my train of thought. So we should that. <laughs> is would sort of lend itself more to the questions that Jake was posing than a model in which we have to be accountable to donors to articulate value in terms of their investment. Um, so I think there are different ways of thinking about constructing it and some that would certainly lend themselves, as I say, to addressing some of the issues that Jake was concerned about. And that's how to implement value for money in ways that value the process of relationships um, and that take account or account for the time and input of all the different players and don't necessarily make ourselves, our organisations, the key actors um, in that, that process. And part of the reason that I wanted to talk about that is the finding frames that Tim made reference to. Because I think, to me, the underlying question from Jake, that Jake was posing that question, was this concern that we are being increasingly driven by the government to start to explain what we're doing in terms of transactional development and then the push to develop these cost per beneficiary meaningless indicators becomes very strong in the UK, you know, the age brand to say this is our value. Um, and I think we're at quite a critical point in deciding which way we go with that. And uh, it's going to be quite a dilemma when the case has been made we need to support the case for aid on the one hand, which in a way encourages us to use those kind of metrics for possible benefit beneficiary that we all know are fairly meaningless. Um, whereas on the other hand, if we view aid as um, the practice of aid as something that should be finite and that we're trying to reduce dependency, shift relations of power in the north and south so that aid is no longer needed, then we need to be trying to communicate the much more difficult messages about value for money. And I think what I was encouraged by by looking at um, some of the Christian A case studies and work that have done PTF and what have you is now that there is a lot more evidence that's coming out because we're not using like cost benefit analysis, but building intuitive cases why it makes sense to support long term change. Um, that maybe the, if there are more convincing messages that can be conveyed to the public to get over the idea that if you give two pounds, you'll afford this much change in a, a person's life. Um, so I think. To me, one of the questions going forward, or one of the challenges, especially for people that are working in voice and accountability projects that are more difficult often and more complex to explain or measure, is to build these intuitive cases about why some of these approaches are better for money, value for money within a vision of um, aid having a sort of finite life about trying to transform power relations so that it's no longer needed. Um, I just wanted to end on one point, as you think about how you take forward um, value for money or articulating your results or evidence or using evidence, which is always or our knowledge, our partial knowledge and understandings which are shaped by power that inform our best decisions we can make at the time, you know, that it's, it's worth sort of exploring the extent to which we think the rational actor policy making model really holds true. And if anybody's interested, Big Club now, in, in engaging those any issues further, we're big push forward is trying to hold a, a conference around the politics of evidence, which is sort of looking at whose results count, which results are um, considered in policy making, which is happening in April. It's not about methods and techniques, it's more about sort of looking about how 
given the, given the context we're in at the moment where there are pushes um, towards reinforcing the sort of transactional notion of aid and development, how can we navigate those um, and maybe use some of the emerging evidence about the value of some of the governance and transparency work that you're all doing to make a case in a complex art work to articulate simply to the public <laughs> the value of such approaches. <laughs>